Hi, I'm Professor Baldwin, and today I'm going to teach you about the quadratic function, and we're going to look at some application problems with quadratic functions. A quadratic function written in the form ax squared plus bx plus c, where a isn't zero, is in standard form. And if we complete the square on this quadratic form, we end up with vertex form, which is a times the square of x minus h plus k. Now the vertex form gives us a lot of information in an easy to read manner. First, it tells us the vertex, the point hk. Pay attention to the signs in that vertex form when you're getting your vertex. Now, if the a, this leading coefficient, is greater than zero, we know that the parabola is going to open up. So it'll have this shape. And that vertex will be a minimum. And if a is less than zero, a negative, we're going to have a parabola that opens down. So that vertex will be here, and it'll be a maximum. Vertex form will also give us the vertical line that passes through the vertex, which is x equals h, and this is called the axis of symmetry. All of these key pieces of information help us to quickly and accurately graph this quadratic function. Let's look at an example. We're given a quadratic function g of x, and that's x squared plus 8x plus 7. And we need to first write the function in vertex form. So to do that, we need to complete the square. To complete the square, we need to find b divided by 2 and then square it. b here is 8. So we have 8 divided by 2 squared or 4 squared, which is 16. Now we're going to add 16 and subtract 16 to this quadratic function. x squared plus 8x plus 16, there, that completes the square. This gives us a perfect square trinomial. We have that original plus 7, and then we're going to subtract the 16 that we added. The reason we do that is because they cancel each other out, and we are not altering that original function. We're just rewriting it so that these first three terms give us a perfect square trinomial. And we can factor those first terms as x plus 4 squared. And then those last two terms will simplify to negative 9. So now we have our function g of x, and we have written it in vertex form. So we have x plus 4 squared minus 9. Now remember I told you to pay attention to the signs of h and k. We really want to have a minus sign here for our h. So to do that we would have minus a negative 4. That's the same as adding the 4 squared minus 9. Now that we've done that, we can move on to part B, which is to find a vertex. And the vertex is the point hk. We know that h is negative 4, and we know that k is negative 9. Now in part C, we're going to find the x-intercepts and the y-intercept. The x-intercepts are when y equals 0. So we're taking our function g of x and finding out when it's equal to 0. So take that vertex form, x plus 4 squared minus 9 equal to 0, and solve it for x. Add 9 to both sides. Now we need to take the square root of both sides x plus 4 equals plus or minus the square root of 9. We know the square root of 9, so we have x plus 4 equals plus or minus 3. And then we subtract 4 from both sides, so we get x equals 
negative 4 plus or minus 3. So our x values are negative 4 plus 3, which is negative 1, or negative 4 minus 3, which is negative 7. So our x-intercepts are negative 1, 0, and negative 7, 0. Now our y-intercept, remember that's when x equals 0. We can plug 0 into the vertex formula for our parabola, our quadratic, but I think that it's quicker if you use the standard form. So if you take y equals x squared plus 8x plus 7, and you substitute 0 in for your x's, you get y equals 7. Or you get your y-intercept, 0, 7. Now we have four key points. Our vertex, our two x-intercepts, and our y-intercept. So in part D, we can use those to sketch our function. I'm going to use a scale of 2 here. So negative 4, then down 2, 4, 6, 8, 9. There's our vertex. We go negative 1, 0 for our first x-intercept, and negative 7, 0 for our second x-intercept. We can find our, find our y-intercept, that's 7, 0. And we can connect these dots to get that quadratic. Next is part E, to find the axis of symmetry. Remember that is always the vertical line, x equals, and it's x equals whatever our h value, or the x value of our vertex is. So here it's x equals negative 4. And we can even put that on our graph. So here would be our axis of symmetry. So this is the line that cuts our quadratic, our parabola, perfectly in half. So the left side and the right side are identical. Now we want to determine do we have a minimum or a maximum and what the value is of that. Well, our parabola opens up, so we have a minimum. And remember that the value of the function is the y-coordinate. So here we have a minimum and the value is negative 9. Now we need to find the domain and the range and put those in interval notation. The domain are all possible x values. Notice that this graph continues on upward but also outward. So the domain here is going to be from negative infinity to infinity. All x values are possible. But if we look at the range, the y values, those values are restricted. They're restricted by that minimum. So the lowest value we can have is a y of negative 9. But there's no maximum. It goes on through infinity. Now let's talk about vertex formula. This is derived from completing the square on that standard form of a quadratic. And we know that the vertex, when it's written in vertex form, is the point hk. But if you didn't complete the square, you could still find the vertex by using the h value is equal to negative b over 2a using the values from the standard form of your quadratic. And then to find your k value, you would substitute that value for h back into your function and get the corresponding value. So let's find the vertex of a parabola by using that vertex formula. You want to identify your a value and your b value. Here, a is the coefficient in front of your x squared which is 3, and b is the coefficient in front of your linear term, x, which is negative 42. Your h-coordinate is equal to negative 
b, so negative negative 42, divided by 2 times a. So we have 42 divided by 6, or our h value of the vertex is 7. To find k, we're going to find f of 7. So we're substituting 7 into our given quadratic. We have 3 times 7 squared minus 42 times 7 minus 91. So 3 times 49 minus 294 minus 91. So that's 147 minus 294 minus 91. Sheesh, that simplifies to negative 238. That's a big number. So our vertex is the point 7, negative 238. Now let's look at an example with an application. We are creating two chicken coops. So two chicken coops are to be built adjacent to one another using 120 feet of fencing. Adjacent means if we build one chicken coop, we're going to put the second one right next to it so that we're sharing a piece of that fencing. So if our vertical pieces are length x and our horizontal are length y, we can calculate how much fencing we need to build these chicken coops. Well, we would need 3x plus 4y. And we're restricted by having only 120 feet of fencing. So this is our constraint equation. 3x plus 4y equals 120. We're constrained this perimeter to 120 feet. Now, notice our question. What dimensions should be used to maximize the area? Maximize tells us we're going to need our vertex. And area tells us we probably need to use the area equation. So remember, area is length times width. And we're maximizing the area of an individual coop, so just one chicken coop. So the area of one chicken coop would be x times y. Now what we need to do is combine these two equations together, our constraint equation and our area equation. To do that, we're going to rewrite the constraint equation in terms of y. So subtract 3x from both sides, and we have 4y equals negative 3x plus 120. Divide by 4, and we get y equals negative 3 fourths x plus 30. We can substitute this in to our area equation for y. In doing that, we have x times our new y, which is negative 3 fourths x plus 30. Distribute that x, negative 3 fourths x squared plus 30x. Notice what we have? We have a quadratic, and that brings us back to finding the maximum, the vertex. We know how to find the maximum or the vertex for a quadratic. And we can use that vertex form we just used, which is negative b over 2a. So here, negative b, b is 30, over 2 times a, which is negative 3 fourths. Simplify, we have negative 30 over negative 6 fourths. Those negatives cancel, so we have 30 over, and 6 fourths simplifies, 3 halves. This is the same as 30 over 1 times 2 over 3, which would be 60 over 3, or 20 feet. 
Remember, this is our x, right? We solved a negative b over 2a, which is the x-coordinate of our vertex. So we have 20 feet for our x. We can find the other dimension by going back to that constraint equation, this one right here, to find y. So y, let's actually use the original. We don't want to use the altered. Let's do the 3x plus 4y equals 120. We know x is 20. So 3 times 20 plus 4y equals 120. This is 60 plus 4y equals 120. Subtract the 60 from both sides, and you have 4y equals 60. Divide by 4, and y equals 15. So we know we need a chicken coop that is 15 feet by 20 feet. And that brings us to our last question. Knowing the dimensions 15 feet by 20 feet, what is the maximum area of an individual coop? Well, we could plug in our x value for our vertex back into the original quadratic we had to find it, or we can use what we know about area, length times width, and we know our chicken coop is 15 by 20, so we know that our chicken coop has a maximum area of 300 feet squared. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video helpful and I hope that you'll check out some of my other math videos.